reading through the Bible in one year, July 4th, Joshua chapter 6, verse 6 through 27, Psalms 135 through 136, Isaiah 66, and Matthew chapter 14. So Joshua, son of Nun, summoned the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and, and have seven priests carry seven ram's horns in front of the Ark of the Lord. He said to the troops, Move forward, march around the city, and have the armed men go ahead of the Ark of the Lord. After Joshua had spoken to the troops, seven priests carrying, carrying seven ram's horns before the Lord moved forward and blew the, ra the, sorry, blew the ram's horns. The Ark of the Lord's Covenant followed them. While the ram's horns were blowing, um, the armed men, hold on, I'm making sure we don't lose notes here. There are a lot of notes in this section, so making sure we don't lose them. Okay. <clears throat> While the ram's horns were blowing, the armed men went in front of the priest who blew the ram's horns, and the rear guard went behind the ark. But Joshua had commanded the troops, don't shout or let your voice be heard. Don't let one word come out of your mouth until the time I say, shout. Then you are to shout. So the ark of the Lord was carried around the city, circling it once. They returned to the camp and spent the night there. Joshua got up um, early the next morning, and the priest took the ark of the Lord. And the seven priests carrying the seven ram's horns marched in front of the um, ark of the Lord while the ram's horns were blowing. The armed men went in front of them, and the rear guard went behind the Ark of the Lord. On the second day, they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. They did this for six days. Early on the seventh day, they started at dawn and marched around the city seven times in the same way. That was the only day they marched around the city seven times. After the seventh time, the priest blew the ram's horns, and Joshua said to the troops, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. But the city and everything in it are set apart to the Lord for destruction. Only Rahab the prostitute and everyone with her in her house will live, because she hid the messengers we sent. But keep yourselves from the things set apart, or you will be set apart for destruction. If you take any of those things, you will be set apart for the... Uh, Rather, you will set apart the camp of Israel for destruction and make trouble for it. For all the silver and the gold, I lost my spot. For all the silver and gold and the articles of bronze and iron are dedicated to the Lord and must go uh, into the Lord's treasury. So the troops shouted, and the ram's horns sounded. When they heard the blast of the ram's horns, the troops gave a great shout, and the wall collapsed. The troops advanced into the city, each man straight ahead, and they captured the city. They completely destroyed everything in the city uh, with the sword, every man and woman, both young and old, every ox, sheep, and donkey. Joshua said to the two men who had scouted the land, Go to the prostitute's house and bring the woman out of there and all who are with her, as you swore to her. So the young men who had scouted went in, brought out Rahab and her father, mother, brothers, and all who belonged to her. They brought out her whole family and set, or rather, and settled them outside the camp of Israel. They burned the city and everything in it. But they put the silver and gold and the articles of bronze and iron into the treasury of the Lord's house. However, Joshua uh, spared Rahab the prostitute, her father's family, and all who belonged to her. Because she um, hid the messengers Joshua had sent to spy on Jericho, and she still lives in Israel today. No, this happened because of her faith. She had faith that God was going to give everything into the hand of the Israelites. She had faith that this was absolutely going to happen. She had faith that there was nothing that the people of Jericho could do to stop the will of God. That's the reason why she did these things. She couldn't physically see it. She didn't know this ahead of time. She couldn't see the future. But because of her faith, these things happened. At that time, Joshua imposed this curse. 
The man who undertakes the rebuilding of this city, Jericho, is cursed before the Lord. He will lay its foundation at the cost of his firstborn, and he will finish its gates at the cost of his youngest. And the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame spread throughout the land. Now Psalms 135 through 136. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Give praise, you servants of the Lord, who stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praise to his name, for it is delightful. For the Lord has chosen Jacob for himself, Israel as his treasured possession. For I know that the Lord is great. Our Lord is greater than all gods. The Lord does whatever he pleases in heaven and on earth, in the seas and all the depths. He causes the clouds to rise from the ends of the earth. He makes lightnings for the rain and brings the wind from his storehouses. He struck down the firstborn of Egypt, both people and animals. He sent signs and wonders against you, Egypt, against Pharaoh and all his officials. He struck down many nations and slaughtered mighty kings, Sihon, king of the, Ash, uh, of the Amorites, and Og, king of Bashan, and all the kings of Canaan. He gave their land as an inheritance, an inheritance to his people, Israel. Lord, your name endures forever. Your reputation, Lord, through, uh, through all generations. For the Lord will vindicate his people and have compassion on his servants. The idols of the nation are are of silver and gold made by human hands. They have mouths, but they cannot speak, eyes, but cannot see. They have ears, but they cannot hear. Indeed, there is no breath in their mouths. Those who make them are just like them, as are all who trust in them. House of Israel, bless the Lord. House of Aaron, bless the Lord. House of Levi, bless the Lord. You who revere Yahweh, bless Yahweh. Blessed be the Lord from Zion. He dwells in Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Psalm 136. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His faithful love endures forever. He alone does great wonders. His faithful love endures forever. He made the heavens skillfully. His faithful love endures forever. His, uh, rather, he spread the land on the waters. His faithful love endures forever. He made the great lights. His faithful love endures forever. The sun to rule the day, his faithful love endures forever. The moon and stars to rule the night, his faithful love endures forever. He struck the firstborn of the Egyptians, his faithful love endures forever. And brought Israel out from among them, his faithful love endures forever. With the strong hand and an outstretched arm, his faithful love endures forever. He divided the Red Sea. His faithful love endures forever, and led Israel through. His faithful love endures forever. But hurled Pharaoh and his army into the Red Sea. His faithful love endures forever. He led his people in the wilderness. His faithful love endures forever. He struck down great kings. His faithful love endures forever. He slaughtered famous kings. His his faithful love endures forever. Sihon, king of the Amorites, his faithful love endures forever. And Og, king of Bashan, his faithful love endures forever. And gave their land as an inheritance. His faithful love endures forever. His faithful, uh, sorry, and an inheritance to Israel, his servant. His faithful love endures forever. He remembered us in our humiliation. His faithful love endures forever. And rescued us from our foes. His faithful love endures forever. He gives food to every creature. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven. His faithful love endures forever. And that is all the notes. Let's move on to Isaiah 66. 
This is a very long book. So if this is your first time going through it, congratulations. We've now finished it. Let's begin. This is what the Lord says. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Where could you possibly build a house for me and where would be my resting place? My hand made all these things, so they all came into being. This is the Lord's declaration. I will look favorably on this kind of person, one who is humble, submissive in spirit, and trembles at my word. One person slaughters an ox, another kills a person. One person sacrifices a lamb, another breaks a dog's neck. One person offers a grain offering. Another offers pig's blood. One person offers incense. Another praises an idol. Showing the two different kinds of worship, right? Those worshiping idols do these things, whereas the first half are those who are worshiping God. All these have chosen their ways and delight in their abhorrent practices. So I will choose their punishment, and I will bring on them what they dread, because I called and no one answered. I spoke, and they did not listen, and chose what I did not delight in. You who tremble at his word, hear the word of the Lord. Your brothers who hate and, and exclude you for my name's sake have said, Let the Lord be glorified, so that we can see your joy. But they will be put to shame. The sound of uproar from the city, a voice from the temple, the voice from the Lord, paying back his enemies what they deserve. Before Zion was in labor, she gave birth. Before she was in pain, she delivered a boy. Who has heard of such a thing? Who has seen such things? Can a land be born in one day? Or a nation be delivered in an instant? Yet as Zion was in labor, she gave birth to her sons. Will I bring a baby to the point of birth and not deliver it? Says the Lord. Or will I, who deliver, close the womb? Says your God. Be glad for Jerusalem and rejoice over her, all who love her. Rejoice greatly over, uh, with her, all who mourn over her, so that you may nurse and be satisfied with her comforting breast, and drink deeply and delight yourselves from her glorious breasts. For this is what the Lord says, I will make peace flow to her like a river, and the wealth of nations like a flood. You will nurse and be carried on her hip and bounced on her lap. As a mother comforts her son, so I will comfort you, and you will be comforted in Jerusalem. You will see, you will rejoice, and you will flourish like grass. Then the Lord's power will be revealed to his servants, but he will show his wrath against his enemies. Look, the Lord will come with fire. His chariots are like the whirlwind and in his rebuke with flames of fire. For the Lord will execute judgment on all humanity with his fiery sword, and many will be slayed by Yahweh. Those who dedicate and purify themselves to enter the groves following their leader, eating meat from pigs, vermin, and rats, will perish together. This is the Lord's declaration. Knowing their words and their thoughts, I have come to gather all nations and languages, and they will come and see my glory. I will establish a sign among them, and I will send survivors from them to the nations, to Tarshish, Put, Lud, who are archers, Tubal, Javan, and the coasts and islands far away, who have not heard about me or seen my glory, and they will proclaim my glory among the nations." They will bring all your brothers from all the nations as a gift to the Lord on horses and chariots, in litters, and on mules and camels to my holy mountain Jerusalem, says the Lord. Just as the Israelites bring an offering in a clean vessel to the house of the Lord, I will also take some of them as priests and Levites, says the Lord. For which, just as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, will remain before me, this is the Lord's declaration. So your offspring and your name will remain. All humanity will come to worship me from one new moon to, the, to another, from one Sabbath to another, says the Lord. As they leave, 
They will see the dead bodies of those who have rebelled against me. For their worm will never die, their fire will never go out, and they will be a horror to all humanity. Now Matthew 14. At that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard the report about Jesus. This is John the Baptist, he told his servants. He has been raised from the dead. That's why miraculous powers are at work in him. For Herod had arrested John, chained him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife. Since John had been telling him, it is not lawful for you to have her. Though Herod wanted to kill John, he feared the crowd since they regarded John as a prophet, and he was. When Herod's birthday celebration came, Herodias' daughter danced before them and pleased Herod, so he promised with an oath to give her whatever she had asked. Prompted by her mother, she answered, Give me John the Baptist's head here on a platter. Although the king regretted it, he commanded that it be granted because of his oaths and his guests. So he sent orders and had John beheaded in the prison. His head was brought on a platter and given to the girl, who had carried it to her mother. Then the disciples came, or his disciples, this is John the Baptist's disciples, removed the corpse, buried it, and went and reported this to Jesus. When Jesus heard about it, he withdrew from there by boat to a remote place to be alone. When the crowds heard this, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went to shore, he saw a large crowd and had compassion on them and healed their sick. When evening came, the disciples approached him and said, this, this place is deserted and it is already late. Send the crowds away so they can go into the villages and buy food for themselves. They don't, they don't need to go away, Jesus told them. You give them something to eat. But we only have five loaves and two fish here, they said to him. Bring them here to me, Jesus replied. Then he commanded the crowds to sit down on the grass. He took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he blessed them. He broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. Everyone ate and was satisfied. They picked up twelve baskets full of leftover pieces. Now those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. After dismissing the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Well into the night, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat was already some distance from land, battered by the waves and because the wind was against them. And Jesus came toward them, walking on the sea very early in the morning. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It, it's a ghost, they said, as they cried out in fear. Immediately, Jesus spoke to them. Have courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter answered him, command me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus replied. And climbing out of the boat, Peter started walking on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the strength of the wind, he was afraid. And began, uh, beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand, caught hold of him, and said to him, You have little faith. Why, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him and said, Truly, you are the Son of God. Again, Jesus doesn't tell them not to, as we've seen other people say. When they had crossed over, they came to shore at Gennesaret. When the men of the place recognized him, they alerted the whole vicinity and brought to him all who were sick. They begged him that they might only touch the end of his robe, and as many as touched it were healed. This doesn't mean that there's power in the robe to do anything. It just means that they had so much faith in Jesus that he could save them, that even the things that he was wearing, it was as if power was flowing through them to the people. All right, that is all for today. So, God willing, we'll be back tomorrow. Behold, the word of the Lord.